Okay, so let's go through uh, all the electronics and the schematic. So uh, one thing I did is I laid out a PCB that basically holds uh, all the parts on here. Uh, very simple to do, it's just two layer board. Uh, I did it in Eagle. Use whatever's free, so if you don't know anything, you can learn KiCad, for instance. Um, so this just allows me to screw in everything, make it simple. Um, so like, for instance, the Raspberry Pi will sit right there, and then I just solder it up. So the way the entire schematic works is, so I start with a lithium polymer battery, which is this guy, and this little guy uh, is actually amazing. It 260 milliamp hours is only 9 grams, but can put out basically 45C of current. That means 45 times uh, the milliamp hour rating here, which means this little guy can power my whole uh, rocket, the motors, the servos, the electronics, everything with no problem, which is great. Because I was using like bigger, chunkier ones, standard lithium ion batteries, but uh, these would reset actually at about 1C or, you know, one times their amp hour capacity in terms of current. Um, so a guy told me about these and I didn't believe it and it actually works. So that's a big lesson on batteries is choose the right battery, save a lot of weight. Um, so from the battery, I go through a little power boost module. I just got it from Adafruit. Uh, I modified it a little bit so it outputs 5.5 volts. So the 5.5 volts goes straight to the Raspberry Pi. Um, it goes straight to the servos. So I have two little SG92R servos, nothing special there. Um, it powers uh, this motor driver, L293D. Uh, I just got this off Amazon, little module that allows me to spin uh, my spin motor, which is up in the nose cone, which helps with the spin control. And that's also controlled by PWM signal, just a GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. I have a BNO 055 uh, IMU from Adafruit. Uh, let's see. So I got MOSFETs. I only use one that basically allows me to fire the ejection charge as an E match, which goes into a, you know, some black powder that fires out the parachute using a 50 gram, 36 inch parachute from Apogee. Um, and here's the schematic. You have to have 1K pull down resistor on the GPIO or the MOSFET will fire on startup. Um, the MOSFET connects the drain to one side of the E-match, the other side just goes to the 5.5 volt bus. Um, yeah, that's literally the entire schematic. Um, so I'll upload a picture of this, the vials for this, uh, to uh, the GitHub, but I just wanna like lay out exactly what's going on within the rocket and that's it. Oh. Uh, yeah, and then I changed my motor holder uh, to a little paper tube, um, just because then I don't have to worry about it melting. Previously, you know, when I had fired SD's ones with the little 3D printing case, uh, you know, the motor would get so hot, the uh, engine holder would melt and I actually can't get it out. Whereas now I'm able to fire, you know, H13s, F10s, goes in there. So for a thrust, Holder, I just put some tape on there. This guy will go in there like this, you know, and, and no issue. So yeah, so I fired an H13 and an F10. Uh, talk about that. Okay, so here's the data. So on the upper left is roll and roll set point. So let's just say that's kind of the angle off the x-axis that it's tilting. And then how I'm trying to compensate for it is the black curve. Um, so you see about the first two seconds, it looks pretty good. I have a nice tight tolerance there. Uh, about two and a half seconds, I lose control of the rocket. Essentially, I don't know if it's a gust of wind or what, but it really goes 
was off course. I'm able to recover from it, fortunately, and kind of get stability. Um, but overall, uh, that that's a little bit worrisome. Uh, and then on the pitch, and what I call pitch set point or deviation off the y-axis, um, you kind of see similar. You know, it's reasonably in control till about three seconds, and it, you know, starts to go away. I'm able to recover, and outside of that huge dip, um, it's pretty, you know, stable looking good. So I put the PID constants I use for the control algorithm in the blue box on the right. Um, so after this flood, I thought I'll increase the proportionality constant. Um, I think I lowered the derivative constant, I'll see, but, um, you know, I'm not sure if it was a gust of wind or what, but a little bit concerning. I also put the spin uh, control there. It's not really, I don't really want to talk about that though. Um, but from here, I decided to move on from, to do the H13. Uh oh, heads up. up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. That ain't gonna survive. Okay, so it crashed again. Um, so the nose cone actually makes for a pretty good shock absorber. Um, so there's some of the 3D printed parts kind of popped out, um, but you know, not a huge deal there. Um, so the electronics actually, no issue at all. So Raspberry Pi, if you solder the SD card, there's no problems. This guy, you know, I've crashed this guy multiple times. It records the whole way through launch. Um, actually no issue there. Um, on the gimbal, again, the 3D printed parts, they broke. Everything made of wood or paper can survive this stuff, no issue. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's look at the data again and try to figure out what happened. So here's the data on that flight. Um, so I increased the proportionality constant slightly, lowered the derivative constant slightly. But really, let's look what happens. Um, so the first three or four seconds are okay and then it completely falls off the rail so the graphs on the upper two left uh, the roll and roll set point pitch and pitch set point are really what matters here um, so you can see after you know four seconds it completely goes unstable so the first four seconds of the flight um, blue is the actual angles we're measuring black is uh, you know where what the gimbal is doing so you can see it's kind of adjusting properly. Um, we're about three and a half, four seconds in. Uh, you know, it's trying to pull back on the roll, which isn't successful, and the pitch is trying to pull back, uh, pull up on that, and it's just not responding. Um, so exactly what's happening there, I'm not sure. I think you know, I'm using a very small rocket. The whole thing's you know, 24 inches. I think the inertia might be just too uh, small. It's just susceptible to a gust of wind. Um, the wind was kind of picking up. Uh, so here's three to five seconds where I completely lose it, uh, particularly on the pitch side. Um, you know, the gimbal angle that I set, it's full, it's set to maximum opposition for this, and it's just not recovering. Also at about 90 degrees on um, pitch, you know, there's the phenomenon of gimbal lock where, you know, you the angles aren't uniquely defined. So um, what I'm going to do to kind of prevent to get the, against this in the future is one is, you know, if I get to 50 degrees or whatever, just eject the parachute. That'll kind of make the whole thing a lot, uh, you know, less prone to just doing backflips and then I probably could have saved, uh, you know, my rocket. But overall, I think my control algorithm in electronics was doing what it should. I just, you know, I don't have enough force here to overcome whatever caused this uh, large deviation, unfortunately.